the best part of an ak is a guy in class 3 can be taught how to disassemble it and reassemble it in 5 minutes it's a simple very tool. very simple weapon and because of its simplicity or the working principle it is very very easy to handle it there's no danger of wild animals like crocodiles or if it's crocodile infested you will have prior uh, warnings preferably it will not like to but if it's hungry if it sees you alone it might i enjoy every single conversation with military veterans but i look forward to my para sf conversations the para sf are the special forces of the indian army the commandos who supposedly the most efficient unit within the indian military they only sent for very specific very difficult missions the beauty of para sf veterans is that when they leave the military they go down very varied trajectories and often these trajectories are very adventurous this particular podcast is possibly my favorite one of 2022 i mean it and if you listen to the entire podcast you'll understand why this is major avinash sahani on the ranveer show talking about life as a para sf soldier life as a para sf veteran all his experiences the weapons the skills the perspectives that he gained over his military career extremely enriching conversation there's very few conversations that i get this excited about uploading on youtube and this is one of them i hope you enjoy it for more conversations like this make sure you follow us on spotify but it's spotify exclusive which means that every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world i also nudge you to check out trs clips our highlights channel for this particular podcast we have to cut the podcast slightly we can't put the full length podcast on this channel but the clips are always unfiltered so you'll get even more content on the clips channel please go check it out this is major avinash sahani with the episode of the year for me Major Avinash Sahani, welcome to the Ranveer Show. Thank you for letting me come here, and I am actually privileged to, you know, have a chance to come and talk to you. And here we are. Let's see. Ah, uh, sir. So honestly, I always look forward to these SF conversations. I look forward to all military conversations, but when I talk to SF people, I'm trying to say this in like a very polite way, but you guys are crazy. So I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> That's what I'll say. it's all relative though <laughs> something which is crazy for normal people maybe it's normal for us every single special forces veteran that i meet is in book like <laughs> you can open them up and there are not just military experiences there's just a again i'm not saying i'm saying this in a very respectful way but there's a very warped different perspective on life it's good no yeah it's it's yeah. the most beautiful perspective like as a podcaster sf conversations are the ones i want the most i'm looking forward to marcos as well uh because i've heard that they're in a similar mold yes um have you met any marcos oh i have had fantastic uh, affiliation with marcos because i was a combat diver one one second so you got to give or the audience context on what marcos are see marcos stands for marine commandos okay they were raised with a specific aim to conduct special operations in water and on the beach if required they will have to go into the hinterland and do the operations as well so the way we train and uh, you know make ourselves expert in insertions on land they train in water mm. uh, correct me if i'm wrong sir but after your nda you get to choose army navy air force no. then it is when you join the nda okay you have an option to choose okay whether you would like to go for air force because there are limited seats the number of seats for the army guys are more air force uh, usse kam and it is the 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 least in the case of navy and uh, everyone who goes through navy has an option to become a marco yes okay if you want if you if you if you want to volunteer for it and if you can pass the test or the standards yes you and can and it's similar to sf like the standards 
yes they are equally uh, difficult but the only thing is they are water heavy gotcha you have to do you know drowning tests and uh, your hands and legs are tired you have to do 50 meter swim and underwater so many meter swim and you know you have to do water treading floating in water with weight and all which we also did some bit of it in our diving course combat diving course so it is their uh, focus is water insertion water operations do you notice personality differences in the guys who go for navy or air force versus the guys who go for army like i, I mean it's a very rookie question but no like no no it's not it's not the, the question is not rookie see the army guys can choose bachelor of arts in india bachelor of science and bachelor of science computer special the air force and the naval guys have to be bsc or bsc they cannot opt ba because they are curriculum is such when they are reading about ships and aircrafts you will have to know the science okay role your pitch falana principle you know bernoulli's principle this principle wow. that principle you will have to know all these things which we knew till 12th but then army does not require so much of technical expertise not all of them but in navy and air force you will have to i would like to know one about early learnings in your career as a special forces uh, soldier but if you could describe the operation like one of your early operations nothing like it the first operation took in a part you know which cannot be brought into the you know mainstream so i'll not be able to discuss but apart from that to be very honest i've never had a full kind of contact you know wherein okay. we had the information we went looking for somebody i had fleeting moments the fire came from somewhere you replied back it went on for 15 20 minutes nobody was hurt hmm. neither on our side nor nor on their side because i said um, i've said in other platforms that in a jungle scenario it will take you around 10 minutes to orient you know who is firing whether it is your friendly fire or somebody because the most preferred weapon there is ak kalashnikov so if whether it's a chinese ak or a russian ak or a bulgarian or a romanian ak the sound is the same when you hear what's the difference uh, between the ak's yeah so they're all licensed ak's only so each country has small little modifications but the basic work, working principle and the magazines are all the same the metallurgy is different and uh, the accuracy is a bit different in the weapons the public assumption <laughs> because of maybe counter strike honestly is that it's one of the best weapons out it is okay it is are there better guns than that again it's you know relative there are a few parameters on which you rate a gun or a rifle the important ones could be accuracy recoil reliability ease of handling so but if you see when was it made the weapon ak kalashnikov it was in 1947 i wouldn't say it was made in 47 i i would say it it, it came in it was acknowledged or recognized in 47 so ak 47 you know automatic hmm. automatic kalashnikov the the man who made him made it and 47 the best part of an ak is a guy in class 3 can be taught how to disassemble it and reassemble it in 5 minutes it's a simple very tool. very simple okay. weapon and because of its simplicity or the working principle it is very very easy to handle it in field condition if something goes wrong you can know what's gone wrong and it does generally does not go wrong because the metallurgy is also very very superior the russian metallurgy mm. and the working principle is so simple that you don't have stoppages you don't have complications wherein the weapon is not firing or the firing pin is broken or there's gas fouling in the weapon or there's double feed that does not happen like anything that goes wrong with other weapons often doesn't go wrong with this so too many parts when they are put together one small little glitch somewhere will put the complete system to rest that does not happen with ak have you been in hand to hand combat situations i generally avoid hand to hand because i'm scared of myself because when i get angry i used to get angry and when i would throw a punch on the almira still almira i would see a dent not a big dent but i would see a dent and i won't and i would feel nothing on my knuckles because of the conditioning that i had so i am being very honest i am actually scared if there's a scuffle or an altercation and if it graduates to a fight i am scared if i 
punch somebody he might lose his life so i don't want to get into an ugly situation i generally avoid that the last time i fought was in nda uh, but then fair in operations has there no 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 if you are getting into a situation wherein you are hand to hand that means you are you failed okay because of high efficiency in special forces and when you have a weapon system that can throw a projectile from this place to somebody who's hiding or sitting in that place why would you like to go and get in get into hand to hand combat what is respected in the world of sf indian sf and what is not respected like what is looked down upon versus what is looked up to looked up to is again being decisive being honest being somebody who can uh, become a part of the team i have always been saying this if you cannot lead a team become a good team member contribute to the team everything is about the team six guys and i and i can assure you i can take on 30 guys not that i'll kill those 30 guys i can stay survive in a fire fight but then these six guys should be you know one good cohesive team our skills should complement the, the team in each other our uh, proficiency of weapons that we would be carrying that time should complement the team and it is all about teamwork i do know that sf has a very strong element of brotherhood and uh, love for the team uh what what goes on in your head are you in all action mode are you in all decision mode i've been very fortunate none of my boys have been hit were hit when we were operating the boys who were hit were from a different organization but under the umbrella of the indian army what, so, what do you understand about that level of pain that's a gruesome injury where your guts have like fallen out what the pain is very much there but you know there are so many things happening the pain is there the your body has gone into shock so much of adrenaline has come out you know oozed out in, inside your body so that takes away some amount of pain the medics have injected you morphines that takes care of some amount of pain what i have understood speaking to the veterans i mean not not the veterans the people who were in kargil and all because my was a, mine was a new raising i had jcus and ncus from all the units they 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 said me that there were people who were hit in the evening during kargil and they sur- survived till the morning not in the you know chest or head but they had uh, injuries and they would say it was more of the spirit somebody who was like okay i've been hit it's okay i've been given my painkillers i've been given the iv to take care of the uh, blood pressure and uh, there are people who are in and around me i've got the emotional support and i'm not dying he survives um have you had any experiences again not in combat in combat outside of combat but you yourself have been very close to death or any kind of accident or something like that i am a very safe kind of driver i believe vehicles are meant to tra- transport us from place a to place b so no accidents i am a very uh, particular kind of guy in the firing range uh, i abide by the rules essential rules so never in the firing range diving i have been in brahmaputra i've been in different lakes channels death no my set is never malfunction i have jumped out of the aircraft so many times again god has been very kind no emergencies what about those dives that you spoke about like first of all why is it required to dive in a river is it training no one was rescue diving in brahmaputra the, the boat capsized and people okay. were i mean it is called a rescue diving but then you can't rescue somebody after 8 hours no if people have gone into the water they've gone they've lost their lives so it was more of a uh, i'll say management of the situation wherein you could at least console the uh, relatives that were trying to at least find the bodies though the bodies were never found they were found 40 kilometers downstream i just hold on just to get this clarity there are people who try committing suicide by jumping into rivers uh huh what is the logic of actually diving in a river like how do you prevent because that's a very dangerous uh environment because i'm a diver no i i've been trained to dive into the water wearing these sets how does someone pass away 
in a river like i'm assume, because the force of the river is incredible i'm assuming that it okay. makes you hit a rock okay. that's what causes actual no, death no 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 see if you ask me and if you throw me into the water even if i don't swim i can just stay afloat and i would be found 40 50 60 km downstream and i won't die because i can breathe while i'm afloat the only way you die in in a in a river kind of situation is when you drown and how do you drown because you you don't know how to swim or you don't know how to float you ke- keep yourself you know floating on the water by trading water trading it's a very simple skill which i, I learned swimming early in life this is just learning how to float it's just about moving your hands and legs yes, right that's and it. having the right amount of air in the water uh, in your chest okay. even if i don't move my hands and legs i'll still float so deep breathing you your lungs have a residual capacity of what 6 liters 6 liters so keep 4 liters of air in your lungs exhale it slowly inhale fast you'll you'll keep floating in water with your hands tied and legs tied you still float okay so that's technique you learn but then in layman's term when somebody goes into the water he or she they drown you can't keep yourself above the water you go down then you cannot breathe then you drink water it's called wet drowning so the water en- enters your lungs and then there's no coming up nobody's there to pick you up give you a cpr you know f- f- push and flush the water out of your body and then you die okay um continue the thing you were talking about diving diving in the brahmaputra so uh, so it is a basically rescue diving but then obviously it's not rescue because people who had to go they had gone and the bodies were found 40 50 km downstream but then we had to dive for 3 days morning till evening and the flow would be around 16 17 knots and the permissible limit was what 3 4 knots but then you cannot say no i'm not going to dive because there are people there are there are there, are, there is media there there are uh, relatives of those people who lost their lives so you have to balance it out find a place where the knot where the speed is around 7 8 knots which is again double the permissible limit but you have to so it's pitch dark the moment you leave the surface in rivers especially brahmaputra so you you go a fit feet below the water surface and it's dark you cannot see anything you can only feel the short rope that has gone down go find the jack stay that you uh, you have laid you as in the supervisor supervises the dive there's no danger of wild animals like crocodiles or if it's crocodile infested you will have prior uh, warnings but then you can never rule out the chance ki ha crocodile you will never have not have crocodiles it might be there but then again nobody wants to come and you know haunt a human being i would assume you are in its home it's like entering a lion's den but in water i agree see preferably it will not like to but if it's hungry if it sees you alone it might it might could you talk a little bit more about diving in the river so so you find the jack stay you know you you keep uh, moving your hand to try and find something some wreckage some metal piece some piece of the bike and uh, against the hope hopen some body which is very very difficult because the flow is so so much nothing stays there and there's so much of mud being deposited as the water is coming even if there was a body you will not not find the body in ours you'll have a layer of full layer of mud you know sediments but then you do that come up take some rest again do that come up you know the risks but then if you train properly that's what i believe if you know the risks versus rewards ratio i believe you've got good chances to survive in all those conditions mm-hmm. and not make a mistake wherein you lose your life what do you eat when you're out on operations operations i would prefer sattu wow okay because it's uh, protein you know all mm-hmm. kind of different and carbohydrates too because you got cereals too little bit of salt sugar water that's gram flour right sattu i mean how mixture, do you mixture mixture okay you have grams you got different cereals also but uh, the main constituent is gram it's kind of like a local indian protein shake in some ways yes and mm. the best part is it's easy to digest there's no problem because you are walking anyways you don't feel hungry for some time and it does not give out smell 
on your operations have you seen dangerous yes, wild yes, animals yes what have you seen i've seen bears i've seen uh, wolves okay just to put this into context when we bring conservationists and live wildlife experts on the show they talk about how dangerous the indian black bear is it's probably more dangerous than a tiger or a dhol or any other animal because it ha- i believe it's got a very weak sense of eyesight so when it doesn't understand something it can smell you and to investigate it will come and attack you that's just its way of investigation now i'll let you explain what you've seen sir so i've seen elephant okay so there's a small little story i'll like to narrate so this is in assam and uh, i did my share of duty the officer generally has the first duty which is the onset of the night or the darkness and then he'll have his duty in the morning early morning because it is very very difficult to stay awake so we knowingly take take that thing to tell people that if i can do that you bloody well be serious so i had finished off with my duty in the first first slot 6 to 8 and i had gone off to sleep so there was this buddy he still serving i'll not name him a manipuri guy so he wakes me up around 1 uh, o'clock in the morning he says saab hati hati and when we sleep we don't sleep like you know you're sleeping you're, you're like you're just sleeping ready you know in in ready halat so i got up i was not wearing nvgs that time what so is all what dark, is nvg uh, night vision goggles okay so it was a monocular sight so I, you got to explain so that so monocular is like single eye okay so there are nvgs which have which cover both your eyes you got have it. better field of view mm. but the downside is once you take them off you are blind for the next 20 minutes wow so you can't see anything okay because the glare and the brightness is such when you are wearing them so the advantage of monocular is you're looking at whatever you want to see though your field of view is not great but once you take them off you still can see with one eye mm. so you're not entirely blind yeah, and again i want to mention one special forces context you guys are trained to kind of have better night vision uh you're like able to see things yes with with time it's not only special forces i believe anybody who can invest time in these kind of activities you will get to acquire these It's, skills feel free not to answer this have you ever had to hunt while out on an operation mm, once it was not not an operation <laughs> we were on a post <laughs> north east you have so much of range a good stretch of around 400 400 meters road went down mm. so there's no road connectivity You mean it fell off like the landslide? Yes, something? yes. Okay. There's a slide and everything went down with the slide. So now the roads cannot come to you. Either way, the roads are in a, in atrocious state. So we had this tinned mutton rogan josh, which which t- tastes horrible. What does it taste like? Neither like mutton nor <laughs> like rogan. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and all that we had was uh, achar. in manipur they have good non veg achars but then how much can you stock so so for good one one and a half month we were eating khichdi you know khichdi and achar and khichdi and then we took i mean let's go and hunt something so we sat for two days we got uh, around 200 kg that deer and then you hunt it gut it because you cannot carry a whole deer no you you will have to put the legs apart i all trained in gutting and like skinning and all it's on the job training like I, while you're there you just figure it so every time the ch- chickens and yeah they come in so you sit and cut so it's second nature to us it's all easy only thing is you should know which part should not burst you know it will spoil the meat i'm assuming like bladder bladder okay bladder intestine and my northeast boys they would leave it. they would leave nothing not even the intestines they eat the offals so they know how to prepare it in vinegar and, and salt and then put in haldi and put stuff besan into that gram H- how do you have those masalas like those are there with you masalas don't go bad no so once you stock it you stock it okay so that's okay masalas are not a problem but the fresh meat and then you eat the fresh meat and then you smoke the rest and then you eat, keep eating for 6 8 months or you pickle them you smoke the rest as well you light a fire on which you are cooking you put a fishing net at a height of around 7 uh, feet put the meat so the smoke dries the meat so there's no moisture so it's hard brownish blackish 
kind of you know meat like sausage sort of sausage is fermented and smoked this is only smoked okay but yes what does it taste like kebab the smoked hard meat will taste nothing you cannot even chew it so when you want to eat it you'll have to put it in water wow hydrate it then add masalas and all and there the hunters they carry that smoked meat and uh, and this much of uh, rice so whenever they the hunters sit they light a fire put the rice put little salt put the smoked meat eat it and walk i'm sure you've seen uh, joe rogan podcast with american special forces yes a, a few yes are they very similar in terms of mindset to indian yes the mindset across the world you see you you if you i'll give you an example it's a, it's a cloth you know and the special forces community belong to is is akin to that cloth you might have different sizes you might have different measurements but the mindset is like the cloth it is almost the same never giving up attitude being good being ruthless when the time demands being fearless when the situation demands being a good team guy team member so these attributes are same across the world speaking about being ruthless have you i'm sure you've come up close with terrorists at some point in your tenure have you had a conversation i did have conversations but when you strike a conversation he is no more a terrorist then most of them he is fighting because he believes in i in an ideology why am i fighting because i believe in an ideology of territorial integrity of peace that has been embedded in my head cut see my training upbringing or my belief system in a democracy or constitution so he is not wrong when he is fighting what he believes in i am not wrong when i am fighting what i believe in so when you strike a conversation it is like a human to a human it is very very different from what you believe it to be but then yes i have served all my life in northeast i can't comment about the uh, jihadists or the fundamentalists uh, in the north in srinagar that conversation could be very different they might have a different perspective of why they are fighting because of religion or because of i don't know what but here the perspective is very different it is not religion it is something to do with their identity something to do with uh, the country not acknowledging them in a manner where 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 they feel important or they feel like equals or some inter tribal you know uh, rivalry going on so when you talk to a guy who has such problems is it is it is very different from a guy who is fighting because of jihad or religion or fundamentalism i mean these northeast people um did you did you find a uh, good reason in any of their arguments of why they were fighting uh if i get into his shoes many a time i would i wouldn't say it him say it to him in open but many a times i would find reason but the way he was trying to do it or the way he was being brainwashed because his leaders are not sitting in the country and enjoying in thailand or china is very different okay the way they they were being fed uh, narcotics to you know uh, limit their thinking abilities to not feed them with information so that they think whatever is being fed by the leaders is the only truth is a different thing what narcotics are they fed ah you you name a thing and it was available there opm ah you name a thing hmm. you name a thing are, are those locals deeply trained in fighting because i know that up north on the india pakistan border people are extremely trained or uh, that's what i have been told again by special forces i'll vets. say the people in northeast they are better fighters because of their living conditions the way i told you they are hunters hmm. and the stamina level the genetics are they are hunters different. they are hmm. hunters their instincts their their listening capabilities smelling capabilities uh they are hunters they hunt to kill and what they kill is what they eat yeah, you know i've never met someone from the northeast who doesn't have a clean heart like you know i've very very good guys yeah they just they're the, probably the nicest section of india absolutely so it's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that someone from there would turn into what we term as a terrorist see again these words are very you know uh, <laughs> confusing 
terrorist is what somebody who is who uses terror to con- convey his her point or to get his job done you it know creates fear in society yes hmm. in this society but if the society is not taken that he or she into the mainstream or if the society was ignoring he or she for a long long time so who who do i blame this is society or the he or she so it's a very you know the lines are very blur uh again th- at least in northeast i be- what i believe it's all political all diplomatic if the politicians if the diplomacy can take a good stand or have a good assessment of the situation military is not required that is what i feel after serving because they are not uh, that we want a different country we want this some factions yes because they were ignored for such a long time no roads no mobile towers no hospitals no schools and when they come outside of northeast you tell them chinki you tell them call them by names you can digest the fact that they're modern they're stylish and you t- try to you know pull them down so how do how would you feel if somebody starts treating you like i mean if you let's let's say you go to uh uh uh, uh hyderabad and people start treating you like an alien your community as an alien because you look fair because you have a particular set of features how would you feel mm. and if your village your state would, would would be neglected for 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 years how would you feel is it still neglected a parts of it still neglected last 4 5 years no things have changed lot lots have changed and, and, and i'm happy that things are changing roads are coming up mobile towers are coming up the representation of people from northeast has gone up and the excellent sportsmen yeah i i don't know why um, generally you see this a lot in delhi mumbai especially uh, there is this soft racism in pockets i don't understand why they're also indians you know and then they there are brothers and sisters i i i kind of hope to change it in the same way. i have a lot of black friends just through content through international meetings and they talk about worldwide racism that they face and i feel the same way for them that why you know these guys are so cool i feel the same thing about northeast so i'll say it is the lack of good upbringing the lack of being uh, abreast with what's happening in the world the lack of being uh, mature the lack of being a good human being how does it matter if somebody looks black or he he looks like an asian or he is short heighted or he is tall or he is not so intelligent how does it matter why should you try and rate him or put him in a particular bracket of you are good you are not so good you are bad or you not so bad ironically people who are trying to you know outcast them they are no match for those guys mm. ironically they better than you in academics they better than you in the sense of fashion they, they live a better life than you because they don't believe in the concept of lots of savings and all mm. they live a you know king size life mm. they enjoy their life they are fearless when it comes to fighting they are excellent sportsmen their villages villages are extremely extremely clean they are very very kind they will offer you food and other things if you've been uh, kind to them what else do you expect I did see a movie called American Sniper that helped me a lot as a person just the narrative about it uh they show a duality of two lives I have a couple of questions uh the first one is just about snipers in general are you also I'm sure you've taken some training or uh, using a sniper no no but it's a very specialized skill the way I was a combat diver or a combat free faller somebody would be a sniper and that's a natural skill set like if they're a better shot mostly there are okay. some fighters who are naturally very very good they require very less amount of training to take a long range shots and there are some who have to be trained so it's a balance between finding the guy who's ready to learn who's hard working and who's naturally good okay and to be very honest in our country we still don't have the concept of snipers why because our terrain doesn't require it no because we have not we did not evolve at a speed with which the world was evolving 
so what i understand about snipers and again this is limited understanding from honestly video games and movies that in a lot of operations abroad they'll have one or two snipers positioned somewhere at the back to kind of overlook the team in the case of any kind of danger or sometimes even just to be an eye at the back am i correct in saying that from an operations perspective so i'll go a step back you need to understand that any weapon that is firing from a long range is not a sniper okay now these this concept is i would call it or the world will call it as designated marksman rifle the weapon and the guy who's firing is the designated marksman so anything which is i'll say below 800 meters is dmr a dm firing a dmr sniping is firing 800 meters and beyond till 2 kilometers people have taken shots at 2.3 kilometers wow. so because the length of the barrel of a dmr is around 18 to 20 inches the round is a bigger round i'll not go into the exact details by round you mean bullet the bullet mm. the grain is much higher the, the 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 weight of the propellant that is inside the round is much higher that the inherent ballistics of the weapon is very good so the place where you want to take the shot and the place where you are aiming is not very different till 600 700 800 meters you aim at a place and you'll get the shot yes if there's a very strong wind you might have some you might have to make some uh, correction in windage in the left right correction if the wind is flowing at this speed you might not like to take the aim at the center you aim left or left or right but elevation may you generally don't what i've also understood is there is an element of lobbing a bullet it is at 1500 1600 1700 meters okay the everything moves in a parabola only okay it's not in a straight a bullet doesn't fire no, straight no no it's it's a parabola as in okay for people who don't understand what a parabola is it's kind of like a curve so anything that you throw you might think that it is straight but it is not straight it has some angle with the horizontal x axis even a bullet yes hmm. yes but it the angle is less that is why it is more stable there is rifling the bullet is moving in a you know clockwise motion and that is why it is able to travel that much distance the bullet so all those higher concepts they fall when you take a target or trying to engage a target beyond 1200 1300 1400 meters at 1 mile beyond 1 mile you have coriolis effect the earth's rotation also plays the role so to take care of those things nowadays you got good ballistic computers they will do that calculation for you wow okay. you got sites which have those calculators bore's site that site will do the range calculation wind calculation and tell you to take the shot at a particular place but we could never evolved into that concept we were always in that dmr concept we call it sniper what is dmr designated marksman rifle mm. we had the capability to fire till 600 700 800 meters whether you agree or you don't agree because your ego does not allow that's a different question but we were never uh, i mean in that league of snipers we never had that concept of employment of snipers in that specialist specific role a yeah, very kind of unrelated question but I, this is something i always wondered even when i was a kid you know we used to keep hearing about um, crime syndicates in mumbai like the whole daud ibrahim uh, phase of mumbai or even before that with the amount of dons that this city has seen why didn't the government send in the special forces of that time to deal with these gangs and just take them out good question and i believe this question makes sense to the people who are listening or going to listen and to the people who make decisions or policies see you raise an organization to fulfill a mandate first of all you make the mandate what is a mandate it is tasking then you raise an organization then you make sub branches in the organization then you equip the organization that is the process so the special forces mandate is to operate across the boundaries behind the enemy lines 
in a conventional war to neutralize very very important targets apart from that surveillance falana i mean killing vips road block different thing now if you want to employ special forces to kill mafia then why do you have the police why was the police raised then so instead of hiring a sword to cut your vegetables sharpen your knife no okay make the knife better yeah we've had d shivanandan on this show who okay. uh, is responsible for actually cleaning up mumbai honestly okay. it was one of the most powerful podcast we've done okay. and you need strategists and leaders like that yes what i understood from the conversation with him was that he wanted m- more political support he could have done his job earlier yes. he eventually after uh, the 2611 terror attacks he was responsible for cleaning up this city and it's a podcast i highly recommend to you as well so i'll i'll, I'll look yeah, but uh, um i do we do we really see that much urban crime anymore in india would you would you say i don't think so it's not organized crime. i don't think so in pockets maybe yes personal vengeance vendetta maybe yes but organized crime in a manner wherein there's a big you know uh, organization i mean th- there are there are hierarchies and they are uh, they have a bigger aim I, i don't think so i don't think so but you know it's like a very kind of mathematical obviousness that if there is organized crime you send in the best warriors in the country to take it out in a night yes that is doable you can go and buy an uh, buy a sword and give it to your cook to uh, <laughs> cut vegetables can you not do that yeah and the sword will do an excellent job yeah. but do you require that sword that is the question okay has the sword been made to cut vegetables that is the question mm. okay fair uh maybe for the last part of this particular episode i'd love to ask you a couple of questions one is what's the most beautiful place you've seen on your operations where you're just like wow i can't believe that this is a part of this planet and two uh what was the most dastardly place again i know you highlighted the mountains of the northeast but i want to know one particular place if that was just like too crazy for you <laughs> okay go with whichever one you okay, want okay okay the most beautiful part i would say it was in arunachal it was like scotland i mean there are photographs in my profile for a moment you would not know whether it was the set of game of thrones or it was india lakes high altitude lakes blue water pure fresh blue water you know cold br- breeze you know uh, going past and lush green mountains it was very very beautiful there was this uh, exercise that was happening in uh, assam and we were supposed to cover only what 3 and 1/2 4 kilometers and i was like we'll just go through it it took me 2 and 1/2 hours to cover a distance of 800 meters 800 meters 2 and 1/2 hours in the jungles i had no orientation the moment i would start when i say i it is my team the moment we would start hacking you know bushes and undergrowth and start making way we would lose our orientation so we kept doing that for two and a half hours what when you're talking about the most dastardly dastardly place. okay when you say losing your orientation is it because of the fog is it because the jungle looks the same everywhere yes both no reference point no tracks this moment you start hacking you will realize that the next tree cannot be hacked because it's very very strong so you try and hack a softer undergrowth and you do that for 10 steps you go in some other direction and what's the apex predator in these jungles probably apex tigers predator no there are no tigers there are no tigers there are no lions there are no tigers there are no wolves in assam predator predator maybe leopard maybe leopards you're right maybe leopards apart from that bears absolutely i've seen seen bears otherwise i don't i don't think there's a there's a very big uh, cat or a carnivore animal roaming around there okay do you think there's animals that are not discovered because of the density of these jungles B- possible v- very very likely i mean because the jungles they stretch for kilometers and kilometers and ki- kilometers Uh, and that could be possible you know there's a geopolitical controversy according to which there are certain countries which are shown much smaller in size on okay. maps than they actually are 
Okay. Somalia and Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo. are two countries like this. Okay. I'm sure there are Asian countries as well. Okay. Uh, parallelly, the Western powers are shown bigger than they are. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and yeah. this is a real thing. You can like go check it out. Somalia and DR Congo, I am dead sure. No wonder is when when the colony, I mean, these people would have moved out of their colonies. I believe Belgium was yeah. in charge of Congo. Yes. If I'm not wrong. Yes. So they would have done. They would have. I mean, they would have felt bad. You know, all the diamonds and. Yeah. Other precious stones are going, so let us do do that. Yeah. You, you you've seen the map of Africa? Yeah. You've seen how the countries have been divided? Yes. Straight, Straight line. lines. <laughs> it's it's also a divide and rule mentality. They split tribes up into two yes. countries. Yes, yes. So they they f- war with the other tribes in the yes. countries that they've been yes. split into. Make a small strip, put a plane, carry the minerals. Yeah, but you know when you look at it at a more macro scale in terms of history. uh all this has been done what in the last 50 years which is very small when you compare it to all of human history and the truth about human history is that borders keep changing true i would personally like to believe that eventually we'll we'll move into more peaceful times where they'll true. change borders slightly i wouldn't be surprised to see indian borders changing towards india's benefit as well true uh but let's let's see where time takes diplomacy will dictate yeah uh but the reason i brought up this thing about land masses being shown as smaller or bigger than they are is because when you specifically speak about the congo the jungles there are so dense i believe congo is roughly the size of india if i'm not mistaken mm, i believe no i believe no? it's 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 smaller because in the uh, article i read about the somalia angle they said that it's the exact same land size as america which is huge yeah america yes he compared it to usa ho oh. he said that actually if you see the landmass it's the same it's just that somalia is a lot more underdeveloped and a lot less populated yeah okay okay so uh, you know even when we when we spoke to himalayan explorers on the show hey devang thaplial i'm sure you must have seen that episode or major jacob you'll keep repeating the fact that listen we are the humans who've gone out there we've seen how big landmasses can be and 110% not all of this planet is explored i agree hmm. so Keeping, I agree. Keeping that in mind, you, okay. you don't know there might be a parallel civilization thriving in the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, even today. Even today, like in special forces. I mean, you've seen such one. You've seen deeply disciplined, organized teamwork. You've seen adventures like this. You've had fucking insane life. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not a very uh, somehow I have some sanity in my head. I I don't go into extremes. Or if I go into extremes, I don't expect the guy or the girl in front of me to go into extremes. Do, do you feel out of place in cities? No. no. You're still chill. I don't carry the baggage. Okay. Yeah, I I want to actually say something very straightforward to you. Um as a podcaster, you definitely develop the skill of podcasting. It's an art form. you definitely can look into people's hearts probably deeper than they can also look into their own hearts because you've just seen so many hearts. so many um major sushant singh was the first special forces veteran i met who i felt wasn't dealing with P- some form of ptsd okay and uh, i thought and and we've spoken to maybe five six of them on the show all the others had something going on in their emotional minds and especially for men because we're taught to be tough since we little boys and you are you know supposed to cry and you know supposed to supposed yeah. to be soft you cannot be expressing everything and all that you are the second person that are seen like this and uh, in terms of personality one person whose personality is similar to yours is suresh raina who we had on the show just really tough i met him last year in ipl okay. yeah great guy yeah very tough tough man um you've been one of the easiest podcasters but one of the toughest guys i've met in my life so There's there's nothing going on emotionally after everything you've seen. No, I had a emotional void for a long time because of the disconnect that I had. But somehow maybe it's upbringing, maybe it's my way of pacifying my uh, subconsciousness. Yeah. Maybe I've trained my subconsciousness over a period of time. I neither go into, I don't slump into depression. I don't get very happy, very happy if things are very good. I am. Most of the times, I am balanced. Shiva. Most of the times, I am balanced. If that is, I mean, I would love to. Uh, again, it's a again, it's a big topic whether he was a god, whether he was a man, whether he was a man who who was who had you know godly character characteristics, whether he was a demigod. But 
I have learned this over a period of time, and I and I and I like that third para- paragraph of the poem. If and I would read it every day when I was in India, every day. Wait, let let's let's check okay. the poem because okay. and the reason I'm pushing for this is because it's my favorite poem of all time. Yeah, yeah, that and um, my favorite too. Yeah, have you heard Invictus? Yes, yes. Okay. Invictus is a little difficult to comprehend. Little difficult. It's not a very easy poem to understand. At least ah, this one. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one ton of pitch and pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them hold on that's my favorite paragraph boom shakala ka that has kept me you know come what may we'll find it out dekh lenge we'll see this is an honor speaking to you like just learning from you your your something else you know um, there's all of us are different it's a matter of time how much time you invest in now at this instant i want to spend time with my daughter so i'm very clear clarity of thought somebody might offer me 10 lakhs and tell me ki bhai you come and work here i'll say no just for the i mean one example uh, so that clarity of thought is very very important ki karna kya what do you want to do why do you want to do and yeah so major saab i invite you again on the show uh, and just like thank you from the bottom of our hearts collectively all was in the room also are just gripped So, uh, any last signing off notes for the audience because uh, we're kind of hoping that these podcasts add to the branding of the Indian military in general. Do you have any last message? I've always believed in a fact, in the fact that be a good human being first. Then you can become a good Ranveer. You can become a good Joe Rogan. You can become a good Tiger Woods. You can become good. Michael Schumacher, you can become anything. You may or may not become, or you may or may not succeed professionally. You might not earn a lot of money, but every day when you go onto your bed and you sleep, you sleep like a child. The way I sleep, hmm. no regrets, no vendetta, uh, no impractical ambitions. When I just go and sleep, I sleep. <laughs> but when i am going to die whether it's disease or accident or whatever i don't want to have regrets i don't want to uh, i mean i don't want to go down with a feeling that you know i could have done that maybe i could have helped somebody make maybe i could have done something it's okay i mean and 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 don't get into a rat race of my advice everybody is running so let me also run everybody is running money so let me also run money everybody is trying to score 99 in maths so let me also score 99 in maths no no find your zen find your center of gravity find out who you are mujhe i knew i i love weapons i knew i have lots of energy i i knew i i can do something or contribute in one particular field god was kind maybe i was positive maybe i tried and help people maybe i accumulated good karma and and that's a cycle it's a, it's, a, it's a cycle you do good you get good you do good you get good major avinash sani sir thank you honor a pleasure and i salute you on behalf of the whole nation thank you for your service privilege to have been invited and it's it's a special platform wherein you know i come from a very small city these concepts were beyond my imagination you know that some day there will be something called podcast and uh, a guy like you and your uh, team will you know call me for an podcast and whatever i speak is, is my perception and it is my experience and i hope that this experience can help somebody who is in a difficult time who is in doldrums and that be it good karma and yeah. then i get some good tips helping people more than you know sir you'll yes. be linking yeah. sir's handles yes. down below make sure you follow sir and turn him into a social media star <laughs> uh star or no star happiness <laughs> no sir you're you're just an incredible person and 
moments like this are the reason i feel good about starting the podcast conversations like this that this is much more worth than the money or the fame like it's it's these moments and memories thank you so thank, thank you, you thank you this means a lot thank you so that was the conversation with major avinash sahani once again i would nudge you to check out a highlight channel trs clips because you'll get even more content on that channel i don't even know what to say about this man just meeting para sf veterans is an experience in itself and it's one of the big blessings of my career that i get to interact with people like this i love conversations with entrepreneurs with sports personalities with film personalities but this is what i call a life this is what i call true exploration this is what i call real hardcore experiences just grateful at this point to major avinash sahani and all the para sf veterans or the general military special forces veterans that make an appearance on the runway show this is just the start of a new journey for us we're going to bring a lot more veterans from the special forces on the podcast and that's why i'd highly recommend you follow us on spotify every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world as i always say prs is just getting started military conversations have my whole heart thank you to major avinash sahani thank you to the indian military in general jai hind this is just the beginning of the military content you're going to see on these channels